so what I want to talk to you today about uh, is the importance of innovation in retail. Uh, and I want to use examples of some of the things we've done in my innovation lab uh, to sort of illustrate uh, the story. So it'll be a conversation. I'm not going to have a bunch of facts and figures uh, for you. I want to talk about uh, what's happening in the world of brick and mortar, what's happening in e-commerce, and let's face it, let's just call it commerce. Let's not use the word omni anymore. Uh, this, is a, uh, you know, this is about meeting the needs of the customer. The customer doesn't care uh, you know, which channel that, the, that they get their product from or their shopping experience. They just want a great shopping experience, right, when they come uh, uh, to, your, uh, to your store, whether it's online or brick and mortar. So <clears throat> we were founded, uh, I believe he said in the introduction, in 1907, so we're 110 years old. Uh, we've been around a long time. Innovation's not a new thing uh, for us. But, uh, you know, the thing that's changed is uh, the rapid rate of change, right? How quickly things move. Uh, and that you have to be much faster and much more agile uh, uh, when you're thinking about uh, delivering the best experience to your customers. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I like to say I don't own innovation at Neiman Marcus. You know, I work with a lot of other innovative people uh, in that organization. Uh, what I own at Neiman Marcus is technology and innovation, right? Which is a new thing for Neiman Marcus. Uh, when I started the, uh, uh, you know, down the path, uh, you know, for our innovation lab, we didn't really do technology in our stores. You know, the t if you went into one of our stores, the technology you would find there would be a, you know, cash register, a point of sale system maybe inventory systems. Uh, you know, they were all back office and, and there to facilitate transactions, but they weren't there to, uh, you know, help the customer. Uh, they weren't there to improve or, or deliver uh, a customer experience. And, and uh, you know, we felt like we were missing, uh, you know, kind of something uh, by not providing those things. And I think as the, you know, kind of the, the mobile revolution sort of started taking place and we started to see customers uh, coming into our stores with smartphones that, you know, outgunned our own store systems in terms of uh, uh, the amount of information and the type of information they could deliver uh, for a customer, uh, we knew we needed to get moving. Uh, and we knew we needed to uh, 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 make sure that we were staying on the forefront. So where I try to... Uh, you know, the, this, this circle that I'm showing in this slide is, is, is the, uh, the landscape that I play in, the entire customer shopping experience. And this could be for our brick and mortar stores or our, uh, our online business. And, uh, you know, I should mention, we were an early adopter uh, of online. We, uh, we launched our e-com site in 1997. Uh, so we've been at it for a while uh, on the e-com side. Uh, and today, if you look at our uh, e-commerce revenue, here I'll give you a fact. Uh, it is uh, about 31% of our total uh, revenue. It's a billion dollar business uh, for us at Neiman Marcus. So it's a significant contributor uh, uh, and a very important you know, piece of, uh, of, of the way we deliver uh, for our customers. So to talk a little bit about my lab, which uh, I've got to do five years. You know what, Neiman Marcus is my first retail job, by the way. I was just an IT guy. Uh, uh, when I came to Neiman Marcus. I actually came to Neiman Marcus for a two-week uh, contract uh, to help with a business intelligence project that, that, was, uh, that they were launching uh, for their merchant team. Uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of discovered once I got there that I, you know, really liked retail and I enjoyed uh, retail. And I ended up staying uh, past that two weeks to this very day uh, today. So 14 years worth is what that two-week contract uh, turned into. Uh, I have I've had various roles at Neiman Marcus, uh, including I founded their enterprise architecture team. Uh, and I mention that because when I was on that team, uh, really what we did was a lot of foundational innovation, is what I like to call it. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, you know, we, we saw the way we were delivering data to our stores. We saw the way our networks worked in our stores, those sorts of things. And, and we saw that they were lacking uh, and that we needed to improve and modernize that. Uh, and all that work kind of set the stage by improving that and modernizing uh, those capabilities that set the stage so that I could come in and do this innovation lab and then use all those new capabilities uh, in our stores. During the five years that I've had the lab, uh, we have managed to uh, 
gain a global reputation of being an innovative retailer and a leader uh, in uh, uh, retail technology and innovation with retail technology. Uh, the fact that I'm standing on stage here in Brazil with you today would attest to that, uh, I would say. The, uh, 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 you did not see IT guys you know, go around the world and talk uh, uh, to uh, you know, audiences about retail innovation before our lab. Uh, uh, came online. I would say that our focus has been brick and mortar uh, uh, for the kind of the beginning of this lab, but I can also say that that focus is changing uh, as uh, we continue to, you know, emphasize and see growth uh, of our online business uh, and, uh, you know, see the importance of, uh, of growing and continuing to grow that business. Uh, so I would say that my time is now split between our brick and mortar business and our e-commerce business. Uh, I would like to thank the conference uh, organizers for inviting my entire team uh, to come to the conference. Uh, and in fact, the entire team is up here on the stage talking with you today. So uh, uh, I run the lab alone. Uh, every now and then I get a summer student partner, uh, you know, to help me with some things. But mostly, uh, you know, how we get things done uh, in the lab is uh, through partnerships. Partnerships uh, with my business partners at Neiman Marcus, whether that's marketing or our customer analytics or our store operations people or the uh, supply chain folks, right? Uh, I rely uh, heavily on those 17,000 other fellow Neiman Marcus associates uh, to help me deliver projects. Uh, and then I also rely heavily on solution providers. Uh, to help me deliver projects. So third parties uh, out there in the world that have amazing technology uh, and uh, uh, skills and, and, and people that can come and help me bring innovation projects to bear. So if you take a look at, you know, how we evaluate ideas and, and you know, how do we decide, you know, what projects we're going to do, because, uh, you know, to be honest, there's way too much, too many things to, to, to try them all. Right? There's only so much money, there's only so much time, there's only so much appetite to ingest change uh, you know, into the business, right? So you have to pick and choose, you have to place your bets. Uh, so when we're looking at ideas, you know, at the top of the funnel where we have lots and lots of ideas, some of them come from me, that's part of my job is to go around the world, meet people like you, uh, learn amazing new concepts and new ideas and, uh, and bring those back home with me. Yeah, so I didn't, you know, I didn't come here because I just love to get up on stage and speak. I came here because I get the opportunity to meet people like you, right, and learn how retail works, uh, you know, all across the globe, right? So some of it comes from me. Some of it comes from my fellow Neiman Marcus associates. Some of those ideas come from various committees that we've created over the years. That SOF stands for Store of the Future. Uh, so the, uh, uh, we've tried different, you know, kind of variations of that and, you know, had these kind of parties come together within the business to try to collaborate and come up with, you know, brainstorm on new ideas. I have to tell you that the iLab has been a great, uh, you know, I think that our senior executives really love the fact that they have a place to go dump all the ideas that they receive when they're traveling uh, as well. So when they sit on an airplane next to somebody that has some amazing uh, you know, technology that they want to talk to our CEO or our CTO or whoever uh, about, uh, they can bring that idea back to Dallas, give it to me, and ask me to go and, you know, check it out, right? You know, and see if this is something we should be looking at or is this something that's really not for us at this time. And then finally, uh, the solution providers around the world uh, are not shy about trying to contact, you know, us and, and tell us about uh, the solutions that they have and why they should partner, why we should partner with them uh, to deliver uh, new things and new ideas to our customers. So essentially, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll kind of sift through those and we'll eliminate ideas that, you know, because they cost too much or because uh, we don't have current infrastructure capabilities to support it or it doesn't look like it'll scale or it doesn't look like it solves a problem for an Neiman Marcus customer. You know, there are lots of reasons why an idea might not make it all the way down uh, to the funnel. But the, the ones that do, uh, we'll typically do a prototype in my lab. It might just be on paper. We might actually build the concept uh, and we'll sort of kick the tires and see if... Uh, this is something that looks like it's going to work. And if it passes that test, uh, then we'll go and do a proof of concept in a store. 
if the proof of concept goes well, that could last from anywhere to, you know, from three months to six months. Uh, uh, if that goes well, uh, then we'll light it up as a pilot, and it'll go out to multiple stores. And at that point, once it's in pilot mode, uh, the lab should really lose responsibility for it, and it, it gets passed out to the regular business units, right, to handle the project from that point on, in an ideal world. Uh, in the real world, you know, the lab typically tends to, uh, you know, and I tend to stay involved with the project and make sure that, you know, things are progressing uh, as they're supposed to. So let's talk about some projects that we've delivered uh, at Neiman Marcus. And, and, you know, I guess just for context, right, Neiman Marcus, we are a luxury retail department store. Uh, primarily, you know, women's fine apparel, women's handbags, women's uh, shoes. Uh, we also have a robust men's department and very fine clothes for men's as well. We do home, uh, you know, gifts and... Uh, uh, you know, these sorts of things as well. It, it's a true department store. One, uh, uh, you know, our department, our stores are quite large. Uh, and we're typically, we're just, brick and mortar is just in the United States, you know, in the major cities uh, in the U.S. Uh, and then our e-commerce uh, site is available uh, worldwide. So, one of the uh, uh, projects that I always like to talk about, because it's the one that's gotten a lot of attention, is Memory Mirror. Uh, and we started with Memory Mirror about three years ago, uh, and the concept was, right, we had this big 70-inch screen, uh, and we'd put it in, you know, our women's uh, apparel department, and, uh, you know, when a customer uh, was, she was trying on clothes, she could go out and stand in front of this screen and press a button, and she could turn around, and by the time she got turned around, she could see a video of herself turning around, and she could see herself in 360 degrees. Right, uh, she could see with her own two eyes exactly how that outfit looked from all sides. It's a very simple concept, but it was very powerful, uh, you know, in terms of the shopping experience. So, besides the see myself in 360 degrees, uh, I could play that video back as many times as I want, and I could also create a whole library of try-ons and then compare them side by side right there on the screen, uh, which we, we thought was a pretty neat feature. And then finally, all of those videos were available to the customer. She could decide to send them to herself, so she ha would have them to review later uh, when she got home. Uh, or she could send them to friends or family, right, for affirmation, uh, you know, for opinions on, would this work? Is this the right dress for the party? Is this the right uh, outfit for our vacation? Whatever. Whatever it was she was shopping for. Some customers like to share just with themselves, want to keep it private. Uh, some customers want to share with their friends, and you could even post it on social media if that was your, if that was your thing and you wanted lots and lots of people to see uh, these try-ons. So we got huge uh, positive feedback from our customers for this concept. We got huge coverage in the press, uh, uh, being the first major retailer to deliver this experience. And we did this with our partner, uh, Memo Me, uh, was the company that actually uh, you know, owns the IP uh, uh, for the mirrors. Uh, last time I checked, it was worth about 1.6 billion, with a B, uh, impressions in media uh, for this little project uh, that we did. So, it was a hit. So we decided we would continue on with this. And so, last summer, we introduced the sunglass mirror. Same concept as the, uh, the big mirror, except for sunglass try-ons, but the way it works is about the same. Uh, and it's a, it's a smaller unit, it's a countertop unit. Uh, and we just uh, announced Memory Makeover and started rolling those out uh, just before the beginning of this year. Uh, with Memory Makeover being a little bit different take, and I brought videos about both to just give you a quick overview. And this will also give you an idea of you know, what the inside of our stores look like and that sort of thing as well, if you haven't been in one. So let's start off with this video on the sunglass mirror.
So Luxottica was our partner on that. Our good friends at Luxottica uh, partnered. And, and let me tell you when, you, when you go to the people that sign the checks uh, in your organization and you tell them, hey, I want to do this project, and by the way, uh, somebody else is going to pay for it, it's really easy to get a yes uh, uh, in that case, right? You know, with the big mirrors, we funded it. And even Marcus uh, paid in, uh, you know, for that project. Uh, with the sunglass trial mirror, Luxottica, covered the cost, and uh, we've had amazing results in terms of, uh, you know, customer feedback. Uh, uh, our uh, sunglass sales associates tell us that these things sell sunglasses, uh, and we continue to expand the footprint of those sunglass mirrors. So now let me uh, show you the video uh, of the makeover mirror, which is new, uh, but let me set the stage for it. Where the, the big mirror and the sunglass mirror are intended to be operated by the customer, uh, the makeover mirror uh, is intended to be operated by our beauty brand associates. Uh, and the idea here is they're going to record your makeover session. They're going to record it in chapters, so uh, lips and sculpting and cheeks and all the different things that happen uh, in a makeover. Uh, and then they're going to send that video via email or text home with you. Uh, so that when you get home with your bag full of brand new beauty products, you have a tutorial starring yourself uh, that shows you how to apply uh, all of those different beauty products. Uh, you know, to put that in perspective, when I started piloting the, uh, the fashion mirror, I did four. That was my pilot program uh, with them. For these uh, makeover mirrors, we started off with 60 uh, of the makeover mirrors, and we'll continue to grow uh, that fleet. Uh, we had over, uh, uh, so we started off with 60 devices. Uh, similar to the Luxottica project, we had the beauty brand sponsor these mirrors. Neiman Marcus put some money in to pay for the hardware, and the beauty brands uh, are paying all the cloud and service fees that come along uh, you know, with being able to deliver this experience to the customer. So it's a partnership between Neiman Marcus and our beauty brands. Uh, and uh, you know, we're really excited to, you know, to see this program continue to grow. Uh, if you think about the, what this brings to the table for us, right? You know, besides delivering a great experience for the customer by delivering those tutorials for her, uh, all that data is captured on that mirror and is available to that brand associate uh, for later reference. So when a customer calls to replenish, uh, you know, or with questions later, uh, you know, about product, uh, uh, the beauty brand has all of that uh, video uh, as well as she, uh, the, the brand associate can tag that session with the products that were used and what the customer liked and didn't like and all sorts of other information about that makeover session with the customer. So it's this amazing CRM tool. Uh, for our beauty brand associates as well. So let's move on, past memory mirror. Other things uh, we've tried. Uh, we did this uh, over our last Christmas holiday, interactive display shelves with a partner called Perch. 
Uh, and so the idea here was to try to deliver some of that online type of content that you would normally have to be on our website to get and be able to deliver it in the store. Uh, so uh, we do these video shelves. Uh, they have sensors, so when a customer picks up a product, the video in the background changes uh, to information about that specific uh, product. Uh, it's interactive, so they can drill deeper. Uh, they can see things like you might also like. They can see information about the designer, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, we tried this in our women's shoes department. We tried it uh, uh, in our gift collection for Christmas. We do these special gift collections for our, the Christmas holiday. Uh, we've tried it in handbags. Uh, we created some special shelves and tried it in jeans and, and had really good success with the jeans. And if you think about it, when you have a bunch of jeans you know, folded on a shelf, they all look the same, right? Uh, with this uh, you know, technology, we can deliver information that says you know, why this pair is different from this pair. Uh, uh, you know, to our customers. Uh, so pretty good results with that, and we, you know, we'll see if we expand that. That's an, that's an example of a pilot that we haven't decided if we're going to roll out uh, you know, fully uh, to our stores yet. Uh, we're still sort of measuring the results and seeing you know, if it pays for itself or not. I love this project. Uh, we all, besides operating the Neiman Marcus stores, we also operate a, a brand called Last Call. Last Call is our off-price brand. Uh, and in our last call stores, one of the things that I noticed when I was, you know, wandering around the store is they did a lot of overhead paging. Uh, and this is how associates communicated with one another. When somebody on this side of the store needed help from somebody on that side of the store, uh, they used paging. Or if they needed help, you know, because there were too many customers at the cash registers, they used uh, overhead paging. And it got me to thinking, you know, how could we do a better job of tying that associate team together uh, and give them better communication tools? Uh, to go uh, and pull that off. And then I met the, you know, some, uh, this company, Theatro, in Dallas uh, and uh, chatted with them and knew I had found the solution for that. Uh, I created a video to show you just for that. And I, I'm going to give you a little side note if you're trying to do innovation or start an innovation program or just trying to get projects approved in general uh, uh, in your business. Uh, I've had a 100% success rate in getting projects approved that have a video. So take that, uh, take that to heart. So what Theatro does is offer a new communication platform that allows for one-to-one -one communication that's uh, targeted to an individual with endless possibilities and endless amounts of communication. So you can talk to an individual, you can talk to a group, and that allows her to be more productive in aisle. Um, it reduces her walk time. She doesn't have to walk to different locations to get answers. And therefore, she's able to spend more time with uh, her customer on the floor where it matters the most. We have been very happy with Theatro in our store. Um, the biggest improvement that we've had is communication with each other. If the fitting room um, is in need of a different size for a customer, they can call the floor to bring a different size. They can page quickly page their sales associate to come back because the customer needs them. So from a fitting room perspective, it's excellent customer service. So it really kind of steps up their game back there. In one situation, we were able to recover, like in the first day or two, like $3,500 worth of merchandise that was getting ready to walk out the door. A LP associate saw it on camera in the back, radio to an associate who was very close to the shoes. They went over to the customer, and the customer just did not want to be bothered that much, so they dropped the shoes and walked out the door. So that was a big save, and that's happened many times. So we just need to have eyes everywhere, and that really helps us when somebody's at a camera and they can quickly communicate to the associate instead of having to page over the overhead or ring a telephone that somebody may not answer. If it's right in your ear, you can hear it and respond to it as soon as possible. It's just, it's just quicker, it's easier, it's, it's seamless, you know. It's just really, if there's a need, we're on it. And the, the customer doesn't even have to wait. So it's really, it's, very, it's a very seamless situation. So love this theatrical. So think about it. It's a voice-activated computer the size of a key fob tiny computer. The uh, associate wears a little headset, very uh, inconspicuous. 
and uh, they now can just through their voice say, hello, shoes, and it'll connect uh, that associate to someone in the shoes department. Uh, or hello, manager, and it'll connect them to the store manager. Or hello, whatever the keyword is, and connect them to the right single person or the right group of people in that store uh, for instant communication and instant customer service. Uh, uh, in the store. So much better than, say, a, you know, a two-way radio, which is always one-to-many. Uh, with Theatro, it can be one-to-one, one to, one, one to a, a group, one to a special group, uh, and so forth. Uh, so uh, uh, we went immediately from a two-store uh, pilot to a full rollout uh, uh, with this product. They loved it uh, as soon as we got it uh, into their hands. And, you know, you know, one of the things everybody wants to talk about when they're uh, thinking about innovation projects is what's the return on investment? What's the ROI uh, for this? And uh, uh, Theatro is a good example of the ROI is not always where you think it's going to be. Uh, in the case of Theatro, uh, the, the store manager that was talking on the video mentioned, uh, you know, that uh, in the first couple of days of our pilot, they recovered $3,500 worth of merchandise uh, because the loss prevention officer could communicate immediately with the sales associate out on the floor and sort of, you know, stop that from happening before it ever got started. Uh, so that, uh, uh, that recovery cost more than my entire pilot uh, project. Uh, we, paid with, we paid for the pilot in day one. Uh, just an LP recovery. So that loss prevention play is the ROI I could bring back to management, you know, and say, hey, here's why we should spend money uh, to do this project. It's not why I did the project. I did the project to do great customer service. It just turns out loss prevention pays for it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, off we go uh, at that point. So the things I've been talking about have been successes, but uh, if you're going to do innovation projects, you're going to do a lot of things that don't work. You're going to do more things that don't work than do. Uh, so I wanted to bring some honest examples of things we tried that didn't work. Uh, this first one is our mobile wallet, uh, which our lab was involved in deeply. Uh, you know, I think our problem with our mobile wallet was that uh, we just didn't move fast enough with it. Uh, by the time we built it, it was a QR code based wallet. Uh, you had to scan it at the register, right, to use this mobile wallet. By the time we built it, touchless payment systems had come out and things like Apple Pay and Android Pay and other things had really taken the wind out of the sails uh, of a QR code based wallet. And so we didn't really see high adoption of our wallet. Uh, if customers weren't using it, it wasn't worth it for us to support it, right? So we ended up discontinuing uh, our mobile wallet. Now, you know, there was a good reason for us to go try to build our own and that is uh, uh, we uh, have a private label credit card uh, for our business and uh, it, it is a huge part of our business uh, and at the time the third party mobile wallets were not supporting private label cards uh, and so we wanted to build our own so that we could support our own card. That's ch that, that has changed uh, and the, the situation has changed so there was no need for us to support our own mobile wallet anymore especially since our customers weren't using it. Another example of a project I did that did not work and I thought I thought it was going to be amazing and it, it just didn't work uh, is uh, the fling wall. Uh, so I built this uh, beautiful digital signage installation that we put in our ladies' shoes department. Uh, we actually had two of them. And uh, it was connected to our iPad lookbook. We have an iPad lookbook that customers can browse through. Uh, and when the customer was looking at a picture in the lookbook, she could fling it and it would appear up there on the screen. Um, uh, so we called it the fling wall. And, you know, the idea we thought was customers and, uh, you know, their friends or customers and associates would use this to build kind of collections of items they were interested in uh, and use that to, you know, sort of uh, enhance the shopping experience. The reality is, is that nobody used it. You know, as, as attractive as we made it, we made, you know, we put this beautiful sitting area and the iPad was on a little stand right there. Uh, nobody used it. Uh, and we tried lots of different things to get people to use it and they just didn't use it and we finally gave up. And uh, we took the iPad away, and we just turned this into a beautiful piece of digital signage that our, uh, our own internal marketing team uses, and they keep the content fresh on the screens, and we got rid of the customer interactive part of it. So lesson learned there, you know, if the technology doesn't solve a real c problem for your customers, they're not going to use it. That's the, that's the lesson we take away from that. Here's an example of technology that wasn't so sexy, but was definitely useful 
uh, to our customers. Uh, when I first saw it, I, you know, I, I sort of was hesitant. I was like, eh, you know, it's not that interesting. But the more I learned about it, the more I loved it. Uh, and so this is our charge at spot charging stations. Uh, these are charging lockers. Uh, they're automated so the customer can walk up, they can just sign in, door pops open, they say, securely store their phone inside the locker with it plugged in, and the phone can charge while she shops. Right? And we all have smartphones and we all know the, the daily struggle right, to make sure that we have enough battery right, to get through the day. Uh, so we knew this was a useful uh, uh, piece of technology for our customers. The interesting pieces for a retailer, right, besides providing a service that is valuable for the customer, uh, and we provide this for free for our customers, uh, is that we get a marketing checkpoint when the customer checks in, uh, and we can do some messaging, right, as part of the check-in process. Uh, we get another opportunity to message the customer when she's checking out her phone, getting or retrieving her phone from the locker. Uh, and then finally, because they use their phone number as the unlock code, we can send her a text. Uh, which we do about 30 minutes after she checks her phone out of the, of the locker with some sort of thank you or something relevant, uh, you know, about her visit uh, to that, uh, you know, to our store. We don't spam them. We only just send one, but uh, we do send one uh, after they've used the locker. Uh, so uh, we use this as a new customer acquisition machine. Uh, you know, our marketing department, we send that data of all the people's emails and phone numbers that have logged in and used the locker, uh, and they check it against our database of known customers, and the ones we don't know, we put them through a new customer acquisition process to see if we can get them to come back again, right, to our stores, uh, and that's where the ROI is. Uh, uh, there is a specific value assigned, right, to new customer acquisition, and uh, we generate more new customer emails from these machines than it costs to uh, have them in the store. So that's how they pay for themselves. All right, um, we just built a brand new store in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and I mention that because it's the first store that was built since I got the iLab. Uh, and that means I got to go in and do kind of a greenfield of new technology projects in that store as opposed to retrofitting technology into existing stores. And one of the projects I did in that store was Alert Tech in the fitting rooms. Uh, and what Alert Tech allows, uh, uh, I can tell you, before I even had the Innovation Lab, uh, we, we did a project where we put iPhones in every one of our sales associates' hands. We bought, uh, you know, I think we have almost 8,000 iPhones uh, today. Uh, we bought them, we play for the plans, we give them to the associate, and we have an amazing CRM app uh, on that phone that allows the, the uh, sales associate to look up information uh, about customers uh, when they're helping our customers. Uh, so I decided that uh, since they already had this tool, why not tie that tool into the fitting room and allow that, that app to also uh, uh, allow for really fast service to the customer right when she was using our fitting room? We've got a video that explains it a little bit. At Neiman Marcus, associates care about service and building a continued relationship with our customers. Once I see Sarah on the floor, I can approach her and find out more about what she's looking for today. We can start a room and she can continue to look around for a few more things while I get the room ready. With iSell, I can check the looks I shared with Sarah previously, confirm if she's here for a trunk show or trend event, and see my communication history with her. Once Sarah's ready to head back to the fitting room, I can meet her on the floor and we can head back where her clothes are ready. But what happens when I'm not near the fitting rooms to help Sarah? Wrong size, different color, different fit, it happens. I'm doing what I do best, making Sarah's experience in the fitting room better, finding the right items to complete her look, plus a couple extra upsells and cross-sells that are on point, only to find out that I gathered handfuls of items that don't work. Now she's frustrated as I find out the problem and start over. She may even leave. What if Sarah could tell me when she needs assistance, whether I'm near the fitting room or on the floor? With Alert Tech in our fitting rooms, she can. They build technology that augments my intuition in the fitting room to make me more successful. With Room Ballet on iCell, I can start a fitting room immediately. Using Sarah's name, I can reserve a room remotely. And if there's a wait, she can get a text message when her room is ready. Now, when Sarah heads to the fitting rooms, I can easily distinguish open from occupied rooms just by looking at the colors outside each room. And I can find the room I reserved for Sarah just by looking for a reserved light or checking iCell. Now that we're in the fitting room, I can introduce the call button to Sarah, where she can press if she needs a new style, a new fit, or if she needs a second opinion. 
Now that she's in the room, I can link her visit to my ISO, so when she has a question, I can be alerted directly. This is a tool that allows me to give Sarah the best possible customer experience. I can keep the tempo up in the fitting room, I can grab a few more things to complete her look, and I'm able to scale and give the best level of customer service to everyone on the floor. With the fitting room system, I'm able to be more responsive to her needs, I'm able to understand how well I'm doing on the floor, but most importantly, I'm able to have more moments like these. So we were looking for a simple way, right, to introduce technology into the fitting room. This was a, an example of a kind of a low-cost way to do it. Uh, that fitting room service button automatically alerts all the sales associates in that area that that customer needs help right away. Uh, there are lights outside of the fitting room. The color indicates whether it's occupied or reserved or available, uh, as well as the sales associates can reserve fitting rooms by name for their customers and then pre-populate uh, uh, the fitting room with outfits for the customer to try on, which is a really nice experience uh, for the customer. Uh, we are uh, uh, very, very happy with the results of, uh, of Alert Tech, and it's a, a fairly economical piece of technology to uh, uh, implement in stores. So I've spent a lot of time in the show talking about or this presentation, talking about uh, things I've done in the stores. So let's talk a little bit about things uh, that have helped our e-com side. Uh, and so I want to introduce uh, uh, Inside PowerFront, which is uh, uh, a product that we just implemented. We use this now for our live chat function uh, on our website. Uh, the reason why I want to, you know, talk about Inside PowerFront is because it's a game changer uh, when it uh, comes to doing live chat uh, on an e-commerce site. Uh, where our previous e-commerce chat solution was basically customers saying, I need help, and the associate answering, how can I help you? In other words, had no idea, right, what the customer needed. You know, it's essentially the equivalent of saying, uh, I need help, what do you want? because I don't know, I don't have any context. Uh, with Inside PowerFront, I now gain all that context. And the idea here was to give a chat agent the same view of a customer that a sales associate in a brick and mortar store that walks up to a customer and wants to you know, help that customer would have. You know, I know things, right, when I'm in that situation, what department she's in, what has she been looking at, these sorts of things. I wanted to, uh, we wanted to arm our live chat agents with that kind of information. Inside PowerFront does that. Uh, this video will explain it to for you. So, Mima Marcus is a 110-year-old uh, retailer founded here in Dallas, Texas in 1907. Made themselves really uh, a name for themselves internationally as being a premier luxury department store, premier luxury retailer. We operate Last Call, our off-price brand. We have a robust online presence with the name of Marcus.com, LastCall.com, Cuss.com, Horchow.com, and MyTeresa.com. Some of the chat tools that I've used in the past are just flat chat window. You, you get no insight, uh, no understanding of what that customer has been shopping for, what they're looking at, what their history is, uh, and that now goes away for us with uh, using PowerFront. I can raise the expectations for the associates because they do have a view of what's in that customer's cart. So instead of having to ask the customer questions, we're, we're well equipped uh, to be able to just kind of ease them right into that customer experience and make them feel like, you know, we, we're, we're there with them. People who have a basket, they may be the most important ones that they're about to check out and you don't want to, them to abandon the cart and you can see where they're coming from. You can look on the floor and you can see a lot of the avatars on the floor. So once a customer is on the site, I can actually look to see what they ordered before. I can go back and I can look at some of their previous chats. I can see if they're on a tablet, what browser they're using. That's a game changer for the, you know, the online side and, you know, is, is certainly, you know, I think the paradigm that we'll see, you know, going forward. That uh, the way we used to do it is, uh, is that's done. We need that contextual, you know, very personalized experience, uh, no matter how uh, we interact with the brand. I love the eyes. I love all the um, virtual reality placement on here so that you can see everything. It's the bringing the physicality or the service which we have for decades been known for in the store 
to the digital channel. I can see which ones are chats, which ones are emails, which are the first time visitors on the site. So there's a lot of really cool benefits that you all brought to the table that we didn't have before. You know, customers have so many ways to get in touch with you now. Uh, you know, customers are chatting, customers are calling, customers are emailing. And these are the types of tools which are going to enable us to be there for the customer where they are. We're talking to 60, 70,000 customers a week uh, here at Nima Marcus. And that's, that's 60 to 70,000 opportunities, again, to not only uh, create a great experience, but it's also an opportunity to, um, to add revenue. Uh, but we also now have the opportunity going in the future, right, to proactively reach out to customers even before they ask. Uh, we can see she needs help, that she's struggling, you know, with a decision, or, you know, it's apparent that she has questions based on her dwell time on a certain product. The potential to drive to know the customer, what they're doing, like associates in our store know where they are. So if you can see, now we are able to tell the person sitting in the customer care center where the customer is. They're looking at shoes, they're looking at dresses. Whether they want to initiate or we want to initiate that conversation, that's at our disposal. So those are some really good benefits that the associate has not had in the past. Okay. So this is really something that will benefit and increase the sales. You know, in the end, it's you know about delivering a better experience for the customer, and I think this is a technology that does that. I love this story, and I love it because what I did, you know, in the early years of the iLab was try to take the things we were doing on digital and, and, and bring those things into our store. Uh, this goes the other way, right? This is trying to take what we're great at in our stores, which is white glove, high touch customer service, uh, and bring that to the online experience. Right, uh, you know, I, I do think this is a game changer. I see, uh, you know, I love the relationship we have uh, with Powerfront so far, and, and I'm excited about partnering with them uh, going forward. Another thing we did, and this is a part of our mobile app uh, uh, that the iLab brought to the table, was SnapFind Shop. Think of it as, uh, well, it's basically visual search, right? Shazam for shopping. So you can take a picture of an item and we'll find it for you. Sounds like magic, but it works. For you, dressing is an art form, an expression of creativity. So when you see a style you love, don't let the moment get away. Just snap, find, and instantly shop for it on the Neiman Marcus app. Now you can take a picture of any item that captures your eye. From shoes and handbags to dresses and accessories, we'll find a match. Take a picture at a party, in a magazine, or choose a pic directly from your camera roll. With Snap Find Shop, your photo will be matched to the style you can't live without. Snap Find Shop by Neiman Marcus. Download the Neiman Marcus app on the Apple App Store. We were a very early adopter with visual search, I'll have to say. And, and, and the challenge has been with this, not that it doesn't work, because it does work, and it works very nicely. The results that it returns are very, very relevant. Uh, you know, based on the picture that you submit to it. The problem we've had with it is that customers just aren't used to searching this way yet, right? Uh, they're used to typing in words and, and, and going and searching the traditional way. So we still are struggling for adoption uh, with our uh, uh, SnapFund shop. It, it doesn't as, it have as many users as we'd like. Uh, I can add a, a, a positive side to this story, and the positive side is sometimes you find the ROI in the weirdest places. Uh, in the strangest places. In the case of SnapFind Shop, it's paying for itself currently because the United States Postal Service offers a discount uh, for technology uh, that can scan printed material, which SnapFind Shop can. I can take a picture of an item on the printed material and then return digital results. It's, it's part of the, the, the post office's uh, uh, attempt to you know, remain relevant right, in a, in a digital age, uh, I think. So we get a discount on our postal. We ship a lot of of uh, postal things. We, we have a big catalog business still, for instance, so we ship a lot of catalog, catalogs. So that postal discount more than pays for the SnapFind Shop project, which gives me some time to experiment and find ways to engage customers and bring that adoption up uh, right uh, you know, with our customers. So I'm running short on time, so let's pop through uh, uh, what I think are the trends for 2017. I'll give you three. Uh, that I think are important. 
uh, starting with conversational commerce. So that's going to be chatbots, which I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, there have been discussions here as well about. Uh, we think that conversational commerce uh, uh, and new technology and AI and, and chat uh, offer uh, opportunities for us to better scale our customer service, right? Uh, and, you know, have the simple questions answered uh, by these systems in a very human-like way. Uh, and save the hard stuff for our live chat agents, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that'll at least be the start of it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're very excited about, you know, some of the new technologies we've seen uh, in conversational commerce. Hyper-personalization, uh, you know, our uh, chief uh, uh, vice president over customer analytics, uh, you know, has gone on record saying, you know, uh, this is the year of personalization and, and, and Neiman Marcus is committed to, you know, knowing our customers even better and delivering an even more personal experience. Uh, you know, I would use the makeover mirror as a great example of, you know, ways, you know, that we're trying to work towards that. What could be more personal than a tutorial starring yourself? right, uh, you know, on how to apply your makeup as an example. Uh, but it's also about, you know, getting better with big data and getting better with all these different disparate sources of information we have about customers and tying them together so that when we make an offer to a customer, it is relevant to that customer. We're not showing her things that she's not interested in. Okay. And then I'll end uh, with my major trend for 2017, and that's experiential retail. Uh, and, uh, you know, as foot traffic is a challenge in the brick and mortar stores, right, you know, we see foot traffic, you know, not growing, right, it's, 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 it's shrunk some uh, for us. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, you have to give reasons, good reasons for customers to come to the store. Uh, the picture I have there is actually a sporting goods store I saw in Germany, uh, which I, you know, I thought was pretty amazing. All the different sort of uh, gear that they had there was all set up. You could try anything. You could, you could lay in any tent. Uh, they had a lake in the middle of the store. You could try any of their water, you know, their canoes and, you know, uh, scuba products and all those things. Uh, you know, everything was there uh, and available for you to try in real context. Uh, you know, and I thought that was very inspirational. And I think that uh, uh, I would use our Fort Worth store as an example of where we've created lots of different experiences in the store uh, to give customers a good reason to get in a car and drive to the physical uh, uh, store. So where I'll end is, uh, you know, when I started down this journey of the Innovation Lab, uh, we used to talk about store of the future. Right. Uh, and, you know, I think about a year into it, we discovered we were thinking about it wrong. Uh, we shouldn't be thinking about store of the future. We need to be thinking about customer of the future. Uh, and we need to be thinking about what the customer of the future wants. Uh, and if we're thinking like that, and if we can deliver on uh, you know, the customer of the future, the store of the future is going to fall into place uh, all by itself. So thank you very much. And uh, we may have uh, a time for a, a question or two, it looks like. Thank you, Scott. That was, uh, that was a great talk. Yeah. A round Thank of you. applause, please. Thank you. That was great. Thank you.